Good morning from Meteora in the northern part of Greece. Today I'm going to be doing a massive hike visiting the six monasteries. According to Google, it will take me about four to five hours, but I'm notoriously bad at direction, so I'm hoping I don't get lost. But in any case, if I do, <laughs> I've got, you know, eight hours to play around with. So that should be fine. I should be able to get back to town before the sunset. I've just started, but I've already got lost. <laughs> Look, I've gone that way when I should have turned to the left side earlier. So yeah, see, I didn't see the signs earlier. So yeah, but back on track now. That there, there, that's the first monastery, but <laughs> I'm lost, so I don't know. I've been going back and forth in this tiny trail, but I don't think it's leading me anywhere. So I made an executive decision to head back to town and then just follow the main road. So now I'm back on the main road. Um, it's unfortunate, but I've wasted about 30 minutes of my time going back and forth in that trail. This road is quite busy. It's not ideal, but I'd rather have this than get lost in a small trail in the forest. Just in front of me are loads of buses and cars, so I take it this is the first monastery. Oh yeah, can you see it right there? Ah, thank God. <laughs> ah. So we're here, about 30 minutes late, but we're here. Holy Monastery of St. Nicholas of Anapafas. Anapafsas? <laughs> Obviously, because these monasteries are perched on top of the rock, you kind of have to climb up to get there. So keep that in mind when you're visiting. Save your energy, do it slowly so that um, you'd have enough energy left when you get to the last monastery that you're visiting for the day. This is the first viewpoint of the first monastery that I'm visiting today. So there's a white cross there and then there's a massive rock in front of it. The actual monastery is just there. Uh, I'll get there in a minute. I'm gonna enjoy this view first. view is incredible. You can see the whole of Kastraki where I came from earlier today. So that's Kastraki right there. And my hotel is somewhere just there, just behind this massive rock. And just there you can also see one of the monasteries. I'm not sure what it's called but yeah we'll eventually get there later today. Let's keep going up. Back in the day, they would pull people up from here all the way up there before they built the stairs. All right, this is the final push towards the top of the monastery. It's quite hard, but my goodness me, the view. Oh, look at that. So they built a platform that juts out just a little bit <laughs> towards the cliff. And I'm standing on it at the moment. And um, yeah, quite scary. <laughs> but here you go. The view is just unrivaled. So you're not allowed to film inside the monastery, which is fair enough, because, you know, it's a religious place. But you're allowed to film outside, so I walk all the way up to the top of the rock and <laughs> I think this is where everyone is. 
this view is spectacular. You can even see right in the distance, snow-capped mountain. Now we'll head back down and move on to the next monastery. So that was our first monastery for today. It was quite small, which I like. And also there's not many people, which I also like. They also have a toilet, just in case you want to go. I was just looking at the map and this part of the hike is essentially just following the main road, which is not quite nice. It's a busy road, so yeah, you have to be extremely careful. I think two of the easiest ways to visit the monasteries is first to drive and second to join a tour group. Um, I've seen so many of them around, but if you're following this channel, you know that I love to hike, so this is why I'm doing it. Not the easiest of ways, but I think for me it's the more enjoyable way. You get to be with nature and enjoy the view. I also noticed that there's not many hikers around like me. <laughs> and I think because I'm doing the loop the other way around. So normally you would start in Kalambaka, the main town, and then work your way from the first monastery on that side all the way down to Kastraki. But yeah, because I'm staying in Kastraki. Oh, there's a bee. But because I'm staying in Kastraki, so there's no point of me going to Kalambaka and then, you know, following the normal route. So I thought I'll do it the other way around, which is quite, <laughs> quite hard because it's uphill. <laughs> that there is where we came from a few minutes ago. Yes, I'm guessing that's the second monastery. Nearly there. So we're here, second monastery. It's called um, Monastery of Rosano. I'll have to stay here for a few minutes just to catch my breath. I've just been inside and you're not allowed to film whilst in the inside the monastery, which is the same as in the first monastery that we visited today. There's a bit there that you can write your prayers or wish, something like that. So I did that and we'll see. <laughs> um, this is a lot bigger than the first one that we visited and there's more people there. The view from that monastery is the same as in the first one. You're looking at the same view but from a different vantage point which I think could get easily boring if you're just driving here and also if you're just being dropped here by your tour guide but if you're hiking um, you've earned <laughs> you've earned that view because you obviously walked all the way up here so it's a different experience all right on to the third monastery which is just there Meteora is a plural form of the word meteoron, which in Greek means suspended in air, which is quite apt considering how those rocks look. That's the first monastery that we visited, and then that's the second one. And I guess that's the next one. We're just on our way there. These monasteries were built between 14th and 16th century, and there used to be 24 of them around here. But most of them were heavily bombed during World War II and now there's only six left. 
and thankfully you can visit all of them. That's probably one of the best views so far. It looks like in Avatar, you know, the first one. <laughs> it's like floating mountains. Incredible. I think this monastery must be quite famous. There's so many cars here, camper vans and tour buses. I'm also starting to see a lot of hikers. So maybe I was just too early earlier <laughs> so I couldn't see them. And now it's almost 12, so there's plenty of them around. Just behind me, there, and then there's another one there, are the two other monasteries. But before I go there, I think there's a viewpoint just ahead of me. I'm gonna go there, check it out, and then move on. Oh my god, look at this. That looks so dangerous. If you slip, I don't know if you'll survive the fall. It's a long way down. So I'm debating whether to go there or just stay where I am right now. <laughs> I think this is as far as I go. My knees are starting to go, so <laughs> I will not risk it. I see those people there. Oh, crazy. Just the fall is just there. I'm gonna head back. I'm sure the view from the other side of the rock must be amazing, but I don't think it's worth risking your life for it. You know, there are so many viewpoints here that are a lot safer. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Crazy people. <laughs> We are so high up. If you look at that. Oh. I think from this vantage point, you can clearly see the second monastery that we visited earlier. And it looks incredible from here. So this is the third monastery that we're visiting today and this is called Varlam Monastery. Oh wow, this place is massive. Think this is the biggest one that, I've, that we've visited so far. Wow, look at that. If I didn't know any better, I would think that to be a really be a hotel or a resort or something. I've just been inside the chapel and the frescoes on the walls were so ornate and were so intricate. And I think this is the best looking chapel so far. If you have to be a monk, this isn't a bad place to spend the rest of your life. Your room with a view. Of the three monasteries that I've visited so far, this one is the biggest, the fanciest, and also the busiest. Right, that's Varlam Monastery. On to the next one. Uh, the good thing is, the next monastery is just around the corner. It's probably about 500 meters away. So, yeah, she didn't take us that long to get there. So this is the monastery of Grand Meteoron. Oh, 
Vaila must be see. This is way busier. Just going up towards the entrance. There's a long queue. And even getting a ticket, you also have to queue. So, yeah. So this is the Holy Monastery of Great Meteoron. And um, this is the largest and the oldest of all the monasteries around here. This was built in the 14th century. It's crazy how other people are willing to risk their lives just to get that perfect photo. <laughs> I'll never do that. Maybe because I'm scared of heights, but God. That there is Kalambaka. The good thing about this hike is that there are so many viewpoints along the way, so you never get bored. But the bad thing is, there's about a million people in them. <laughs> so you kind of have sometimes the queue just to get the view, but that's just how it is. So I'm now walking towards the Holy Trinity Monastery, which is just there. Now you have to go down to the bottom of the hill first and then climb up. <laughs> Fun times. I overheard a guide saying that this is the hardest monastery to get to. I think because from the road you have to go down to the bottom of the rock where the monastery is located. And then from there you have to go up 140 steps to get to the, the monastery and then you have to obviously do that in reverse on the way back so it's not easy so not many people would come here which is good for crowd control <laughs> mm -hmm. of the five monasteries that I've visited so far this is my favorite you have a nice garden nice view and more importantly, there's less people here, so I might stay here for a bit. So back in the day, this is what they used to pull their supplies from down there. Yeah, they turn that thing in and then that rope will then pull up whatever is at the bottom of the valley. These days, they have the mechanized thing, <laughs> modern. That there is the trail, if I would have followed it. I think I'm not brave enough <laughs> to walk on the edge. <laughs> so I'm just gonna walk on the side of the road. Um, there's plenty of space. So it's a lot safer because um, yeah, if I make a mistake whilst there, then that'd be the end of me. <laughs> now it's probably a good time to mention that not all the monasteries are open every day. Some of them are shut on Sunday, some of them are shut on Monday. So double check before heading out to visit them. Luckily for me, it's Saturday today and they're all open on Saturdays. But even then, you still have to check the time because like what's happening now, <laughs> I got here at just past two o'clock in the afternoon, but I didn't realize that they're shut from one to three o'clock. So now I have to wait about 40 minutes. Three o'clock, so we've opened the gate. Let's go towards the panoramic view. Oh, wow. 
this is a really nice view of Catambata. You can see the whole town from here. So that's all of the six monasteries. I'm heading back to town now to have lunch because I'm starving. <laughs> that's a good sign. Huh. Back to Palambaca. The most fascinating thing about Meteora, at least for me, is that the rock formations, although that in and itself is quite impressive. But the most fascinating thing is how we human beings are able to build something on top of a rock in the middle of nowhere. I mean, the logistics involved in that must be, it must be a nightmare to build such a monumental thing. It shows that we humans are capable of achieving quite a lot of impressive things, things that are almost impossible if we put our hearts and minds to it. Equally, we humans are also capable of destroying cities and killing innocent people for no good reason at all. So, you know, there's that. So I'm now back in town. I'm gonna stop my watch here. Um, it's 21 kilometers in total and it's taken me just over six hours to finish the whole loop. I would highly recommend doing this hike in early spring and maybe in autumn time. I don't imagine it to be enjoyable when it's baking hot in the summer. I'm heading to Thessaloniki next for a quick visit and I will see you there. Kita kids, or as they say here in Greece, ta lemme!